I'm escaping to the one place that hasn't been corrupted by capitalism. The Wrestling Life. Hey everybody, it's The Wrestling Life. It's episode 376. It is August 22nd, 2021. I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. Liam, we really do have so much to talk about this week. Yes, uh, an eventful week. And as always, so many things we can't talk about on the first and the only wrestling podcast. Yeah, there's so much going on in wrestling right now. Thank God there's one podcast that can cover it. (laughs) You know, heavy is the head. You know, it's it's a yes. heavy burden, but we yes. we soldier on braver than any troop has ever been. That's right. It is our post SummerSlam show. SummerSlam easily like the fourth biggest story of the week. <laughs> CM Punk returned to wrestling after seven and a half years on AEW Rampage in the most strangely promoted surprise, non surprise in my lifetime. But he's back. What do mm-hmm. you think? Yeah, only thing I could compare this to was that uh, the Cena Undertaker WrestleMania match a couple of years ago. Good point. Um, although that at least involved John Cena calling out the Undertaker by name every week. True. Uh, so not quite the same, but yeah, that's probably maybe the closest parallel. But yeah, as as we've talked about the last few weeks, they heavily implied this. They zoomed in on fans chanting for CM Punk when the show was announced. Darby Allen talked about calling out the best in the world. Uh, yeah, Kenny Omega wore some some cute T-shirts. <laughs> There's a lot of lots of hints, but nobody ever said the word CM Punk. They didn't even really say until the show was on the air. Hey, there's going to be a big announcement on this show. Right. They announced Jade Cargill uh, in action, John Moxley in action. And a tag team match. And that's really all they had said. <laughs> yeah. And so, it was called the first dance. Yeah. Right. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, um, it was uh, that was a fascinating, it's a fascinating experiment. And obviously we'll see when it comes to a viewership standpoint, what, what that means. But uh, as far as a moment in professional wrestling, I mean, that's, that's the stuff that every company tries to create. And try, you know, you want to have those moments where people just you have the goosebumps and you remember where you were, where you were when you were watching it and and all that stuff. And that that genuine raw emotion that's like, oh, right, that's that's why we put up with all the guff (laughs) in pro wrestling. It's because once in a while we get something like that and it's one of the best things you've ever seen. And confirm CM Punk still a very good promo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All he did was talk and uh, said that he'll be wrestling Darby Allen at the pay-per-view uh, in uh, two weeks. So he said he started to help young guys and the way that Eddie Guerrero and Tracy Smothers and Harley Race uh, helped him. He's there to settle a couple scores. He said, who knows who else might be coming in for him to work with? He wants to work with everybody. He put everybody over. Tony Khan wants him to work other places. They'll talk about it, but guy came back the cynical part of me is like well there's very few places where he could make millions of dollars <laughs> and mm-hmm. he's lost millions of dollars being sued by wwe and colt cabana mm-hmm. his co-worker <laughs> yes yes that's very a very interesting yeah i think there's going to be i think they're going to make storyline of it which is like yeah that's such carny bs but <laughs> Yeah, they're, they're gonna they're gonna recreate the Brett Sean uh, thing, right? They're gonna have one of them call the other out, and they're gonna do a, a hug. I would think you would want to do an do a match off of it. I would think, yeah. but this is a carny. This is the least carny of the carnies, right? So mm-hmm. I don't know, but my my so Punk was asked in the post. Um, show press conference uh, did you have any problems with anybody there today or did you smooth things over with anyone there today obviously referencing cabana punk said no i didn't really have any problems with anybody here today no so the fact that he did not address colt cabana by name mm-hmm. that he did not address the situation by name was like big angle alert to me but okay colt also wasn't there i believe he was working in indy 
All right. Um, so not that that means any, but I, I think you're, you're quite possibly right. I think it would be really weird to never address that. <laughs> um, yes. So even if it's like a short TV thing, like a short TV program and they do one match or whatever, right. I think you're right. I think there's something there and it's an obvious thing to, uh, to do that match. And Hey, they got a lot of shows. I mean, they, I guess he's not going to wrestle before all out, but like, yeah. I'm sure they'll be back in Chicago soon enough. And those are two Chicago boys. So yeah, you could do they're that. Always, the, yeah. They're always there like Thanksgiving week, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's something you could throw on that show. That would uh, get people excited. I'm sure. Yeah. I think that, I think that might happen, but regardless, uh, the guy's back. Of course, he's going to come back because he, he needs the money is not probably accurate. But if you want to live extremely well for the rest of your life and you've made your money performing uh, physically, 42 years old, clock's running, right? So, of course, he came back. Yeah, yeah, that it, it makes sense. It's it. We've we've talked about this over the years. Everybody comes back in some way, shape or form eventually. <laughs> Yep. Um, you know, you think about like the Brunos or the Bretts <laughs> or people that had a lot of reasons to stay away. Um, you know, even in, in some ways, not obviously not with WWE, but like, you know, Martha Hart came back to wrestling and, you know, has allowed right. allowed merchandise and things to be produced for Owen after years away. So right. like there's very few people that seem to be able to get out of the wrestling business and truly never come back uh whether it's at least partially you know monetarily motivated or not in in punk's case well i'm sure that didn't hurt (laughs) and i mean i think we we touched on it a week or two ago but when he he was on renee's podcast uh, earlier this year and he was pretty upfront about well it would have to be something i was excited about and it would also require probably a lot of money (laughs) Yes. So I think he probably is excited to work with that young talent. And also he probably got, got his, yeah, he secured the bag as, as the kids say. Yes. Yeah. I'm sure he's the best paid person in the company. I would imagine. Mm. Uh, we don't know how long his contract is. Neither he nor Khan would say. Um, they said it's not short term and he's not part time. So we know he's there. He's there for a, for a while and he's there full time, whatever full time means. I think not having house shows will help a 42 year old guy who's pretty banged up physically. That'll be nice. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that's works. It'll be interesting to see. And I think this will be interesting for a lot of talent, but it's how many guys are working Wednesday and Friday. <laughs> yeah. Um, probably, I mean, I guess you, I'm guessing there's going to be very few people that work matches on both shows in a week, but even as far as appearances go, like obviously, especially with your, with your tippy top stars, that was always Austin's rule was he didn't really like working SmackDown because, right. you know, he, he knew that the less he was on TV, the more <laughs> he would mean. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I think that'll, that'll be interesting now if they have the second show. Uh, where where he fits into that and again you can use him in creative ways you know have him either appear just for the live crowd if you're trying to sell tickets by his name or you can have him do commentary or just you know do a promo or something like there's a lot of stuff you can do to to keep him around and keep his name and you know on the marquee as it were even if he's not you know actively wrestling or doing a 20 minute promo every week but yeah that it'll be interesting to see i think how exactly he's utilized and how often he is sort of how often I guess the television episodes are built around him. Yeah. Yeah. I, my thought watching that was, well, they're going to build a company around him. Uh, (laughs) And he has diminishing returns doing that with a 42 year old at the same time, he absolutely should be the focus until he proves he shouldn't be. Right. I mean, am I crazy? No, I, I think you're right. I think that was, and, you know, it was interesting. I was, I was talking to uh, somebody, a, f- a friend of mine who is uh, uh, an on and off wrestling fan. And, and he, he asked like, he's like, wasn't it weird that they put him out there first? And I was like, 
Look, they put him out there first because I think they didn't know like when he would be allowed to speak when the crowd would stop cheering. <laughs> like, and I think they wanted to give him as much time as possible. And then they would cut time from matches where needed to fit fill the rest of the show. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think I think and if there was a Kenny Omega promo on the show where he talked about that and they kind of tied it into the Christian thing, but he mentioned like, oh, you're gonna wish you stay away for another seven years after <laughs> after i'm done with you and it's like that's ah, kind of works for both the current guy he's feuding with and the next guy he's probably going to be feuding with but yeah, yeah. i think th- i think that's that's the obvious match to make when you're when you're done with that if omega's your your biggest your biggest heel and punk's now your biggest baby face like that's that's the match you should be building towards one last thing I want to touch on was I thought it was very nice that he took time out of his promo to say if any fans ha- were disappointed in any decisions that I made, if, I, if you feel let down, I understand that if you understand why I did what I did. I think for someone who's very has a very prickly disposition and can have a very weird relationship with his fan base who are sometimes Mm -hmm. a little bit too clingy, (laughs) like wrestling fandom in general, I think is a little bit too touchy feely. I mean, the guy, you know, people used to like go to go to the guy's house and (laughs) yeah, like hang out in his backyard and try to look at his windows and stuff. Like he had, some real, real disturbed, mentally disturbed people like stalking him basically at various points of his career. So I would understand why you would have not the most warm, fuzzy relationship with fans. But I thought he didn't have to do that. And he did take time out of his I'm here promo to say, you know, if you're disappointed in me, I get that. But here's why I didn't think he had to do that. Yeah, no, I thought that that made sense. And it was, I agree. Like I thought that was a, maybe an olive branch to people that, yeah, that, and we, we've talked about this over, over the years. I think there's a, there is a desire when you are a fan of someone of a celebrity of an athlete that you also want them to be like a great person right? and a nice person. <laughs> and, right. and again, as you said, he had, certain reasons to maybe want to keep people at arm's length. Right. Uh, so I, you know, it's not all, it's not all on, the blame doesn't solely rest at his feet, but yeah, I think, I think taking that moment and, uh, and, and saying that and saying, I get it. I get why maybe it was a bummer for you when I just peaced out and <laughs> said, I hate professional wrestling and I'm never coming back. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, and I, I thought that was good. I, I, I obviously the 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 hot button line, if there was one, was he said that he quit professional wrestling in two thousand five <laughs> and just now was coming back. Which yes. I I just took that as uh, the company that he worked for from two thousand six to twenty fourteen uh, very proudly banks the drum that they are not pro wrestling, right? Uh, and has for thirty years, so. I didn't right. take that as like some dramatic slight against, you know, his good moments in, in WWE. Exactly. I didn't. Yeah. People are like, oh, that spits to the face of fans who are his fans in WWE. It's like, no, it doesn't. He was they're in a wrestling war and he used to turn a phrase against the company that all they do is turn phrases. Exactly. Right. It was it was a very simple thing. And it was just a point that he was making and that he felt like. You know, and maybe, and then that was his sort of way of also being like, yeah, I went somewhere. I knew it was going to be really tough to succeed where I was going. Yeah. And I knew what they, what I liked doing was pro wrestling. And that was not what they were going to want me to do. Right. So like, yeah, I didn't, I didn't think that was a particularly controversial line, but I, I, I thought it was, yeah, it was, it was a very good promo. And then I thought, and it reminded me a little bit of that the pipe bomb promo, which is a good promo. And then at the end, when it's time to sell the match, he turns it. And I thought he did a great job of that with Darby at the end too. Of it's a lot of you know, thank you for you know, thank you for your 
not letting me be forgotten and all that. And I'm back and I'm happy and like everything we've gone over. And they said, all right, <laughs> all right, you little kid. And, uh, you know, uh, Darby and Sting and his dad Sting <laughs> were, were playing, playing the part of the wall in, yes. uh, in WCW. We were 85,000 <laughs> feet away and, and Punk is very high up. up. <laughs> Punk is looking up, yelling at them. And, and you know, the, the line about their, you know, Darby lives dangerously and there's nothing more dangerous than wrestling CM Punk. I thought that was a great line. So I thought he did a great job of it's this wonderful, super fun celebratory moment. And you could have just left it there, but he's also, he's like, also I have a wrestling match on pay-per-view in two weeks and you should all go watch that. So I was like, so he's like, he also did the, the promotion part, which, which I think contrary to popular belief uh, sometimes is like, that is kind of the point of doing segments where people talk is to get them excited for a wrestling match. You're going to have promos because they are promotional in nature. Yes. So like when someone tells me the Miz is a good promo, I, I might disagree because I've never looked forward to a Miz wrestling match, but uh, I digress, but yeah, no, I thought that was, I thought it, it t- touched all the right notes. It was a happy celebratory moment. And then he, he plugged his match and, uh, and we're off to the races and he'll, he'll be on dynamite in Milwaukee this week. And, and then uh, we, yeah, we got two weeks to the pay-per-view. Well, you know, Vince McMahon was going to pull out of the stops at SummerSlam to try to match that 24 hours later, or less than 24 hours later. Summer Slam, Summer Slam, pardon me. <clears throat> Summer Slam is a really weird show. It followed the pattern of a lot of WWE pay-per-views over the last year and a half, two years, I don't know, where I thought the beginning of the show was good, and then it fell off a steep, steep cliff. And then I missed the main <laughs> event because I had chores to do. Um, <laughs> but I missed Brock Lesnar returning. But obviously the big news, Brock Lesnar and Becky Lynch returned at SummerSlam that's the biggest stuff on the show. So, of course, <laughs> Vince had two two aces uh, in the hole. He used both of them tonight, and I don't know if it makes any difference or not. They had 45,000 people in a stadium. They're extremely financially successful. I'm not sure if they're in this, <laughs> even in the same business that AEW is in, but WWE had a very 2021 WWE show with SummerSlam. What do you think of it? Yeah, I, uh, I thought it was a really weird show, <laughs> and it got progressively weirder as it went on. Um, there was, uh, you know, the, they did the, the tag matches up front. They were both fine, and then there's like a 20-minute period where there's no wrestling. <laughs> yes. And they up to, so, I mean, this has been kind of an open secret, um, or not even an open secret. They announced it at the house shows last weekend. Uh, Sasha and <laughs> Bianca were take pulled from both of those shows due to, and I quote, unforeseen circumstances, right. right. Um, which given the current climate of the world, I think we, we can all kind of infer what maybe that was about. Sure. Um, and then Bianca came back on SmackDown this week and they were still plugging the match. So everyone thought, well, I guess it's fine. I guess they're both cleared. And PW Insider, I believe, reported Thursday this week that they were both cleared. I believe you're right. Yes. So it looked like everything was smooth sailing. And then uh, I guess today uh, they were like, uh, they're starting to worry that maybe she's not. Or I guess when she was when she did not appear on SmackDown, there was yeah. there was yes. then some rumblings. So they were concerned she might not make the show. Right. And then. Uh, I forget who it was. I think it was the the Raj guy who's been around yeah. for 175 years. I think he's connected to Wrestling Inc. Now, I believe you're right. And he was he just said, "I'll just say it. <laughs> She's off the show." Right. Uh, I don't think anybody else had confirmed that report, but sure enough, all through the pre-show and on to the main show, they promoted that match. They aired a video package <laughs> during the show for the match. Bianca came out, and then they just announced. Sasha Banks will not be appearing. Yep. And uh, it was a very awkward couple of minutes as yep. uh, Cole and, and Pat tried to like improv some stuff. 
Yep. And then they said that she was going to wrestle Carmella and the crowd began to uh, they were preparing to hijack the rest of the show. (laughs) They were a little restless. (laughs) And uh, thankfully, at least theoretically, uh, Becky Lynch's music hit and and we're and she's back and she looks great and it's exciting. and Everybody's so happy to see her. And uh, they she beats up Carmella and doing a face off with Bianca. The crowd's going crazy. All of a sudden, they're doing a match. The crowd's going crazier. And then uh, Bianca played the part of the honky tonk man. Yep. And Becky was the warrior and pinned her in 10 seconds. And then the crowd got real quiet. For the next 90 minutes or so, they were pretty quiet. <laughs> yep. Yeah, man, like, I I don't have a problem with if you think you can make more money with Becky Lynch as your champion than Bianca Belair as your champion. I wouldn't even necessarily argue that point. Becky Lynch has a track record. Bianca doesn't have a track record because she's only been in her spot for four months or whatever, right? Right. (laughs) That's not how I would have done it. I don't have a problem with Becky beating Bianca. You could have done it better. Yeah, I mean, to me, the easiest thing to do is you if since you if we accept a scenario where we had to bring Carmella out, <laughs> right? Um, have Bianca just smash her in twenty seconds, right? And win, and yeah. then Becky comes out, and you just do the stare down tonight, and then since everything it's a TV business now, brother, you announce we're going to do Becky and Bianca on SmackDown this Friday. And or, then you yeah, do the title or, change there or at the next pay-per-view, whatever right. you want to do. Yeah, let's try to make some money off this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we made no money off it tonight. And good luck selling the rematch because the, the champion got squashed. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's also just so strange because in a very uncharacteristically WWE way, they were doing a very good job, I thought, for, for per modern WWE standards with Bianca as... Like they picked a new star and they had her beat everybody and she won the rumble and she won the belt. And then, I mean, they yep. only have like three women on SmackDown. She's just been wrestling the same three people over and over. <laughs> right. But, but the, even that being said, like, I thought like they've done a good job. Obviously she, she was at the ESPYs that, you know, they had, had her on a, like a big marquee moment with the, the rolling loud festival. And I know the fans there didn't really care about the wrestling, <laughs> but it still looks cool to have her in that sea of people wrestling a match. Like that's awesome. Yeah. And I was like, okay, so we got something here. And it's like, so what do you do now that she lost in five seconds, like a loser, like you get to turn her heel. Like that's, that that's not what we need, man. Like (laughs) we don't need more. Like the last thing WWE needs is more heat. And I, I think she's really good in, in a baby face role. And, like is an ambassador that you want your company to have going forward. And I just like, so it's like, well, she's either a baby face that just lost like a geek or they're going to turn her, which will be a bummer in a different way. Yes. Yeah. And not, not a lot of positive news coming out of the show. If you're a Bianca Belair fan. So we'll have to see how that plays out. <laughs> I doubt it will play out well for her. Wait and see. Slow build. Perhaps she will also get Scarlet to manage her. And uh, it'll and be that, the source of her power. Yes. And then she'll also <laughs> beat Jeff Hardy three three weeks in a row. Man. Anyway, Roman uh, beat John Cena and then Brock Lesnar came back. There is an interesting story you can tell there with, you know, Hamian's with Roman now. And Brock is, I guess, going to be a baby face now. Mm-hmm. And there's a story there to tell. I just like who could possibly give a shit about Brock Lesnar in 2021 is my question. I mean, I like when he throws dudes around like that's that's still a ton of fun to me. Like, I think. But and Roman doesn't do wrestling matches that much anymore. <laughs> neither. So. Neither do. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> uh, seriously, by the way, like you talk about like a, a work smarter match for for Roman. Uh, he took like three bumps the whole match. And one of them was an AA through the table on, on the floor. So 
not saying he didn't work hard, but it was a lot of Cena. Sure. Cena, the movie star, <laughs> took a lot more, uh, you know, traditional pro wrestling bumps than than Roman did in that match. Okay, uh, I obviously I just said I haven't seen it yet, but right. we were talking ahead of time, and I expected practically zero bumps from either man the whole time because I think they both. One is in movies. One wants to be in movies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, they. Yeah, it was. It, it was a lot of like he he punches John Cena and John Cena f- takes a back bump and then lays there and <laughs> and Roman gestures to the crowd or talks to the camera. A lot so, of talking, a fair yeah. amount of squeezing. They worked a long <laughs> sleeper hold at one point. Uh, sure. it, it's not the most exciting, and then you know they do the near falls at the end, and it gets excite. It gets a little more exciting then, but yeah, the the match itself wasn't was it particularly great? But yeah, I mean having Brock back that's theoretically exciting, <laughs> and could be interesting. I don't I don't know. Like he'll he probably he'll probably get to kill the the tag champs on uh on TV this week, so that'll be fun. Sure, yeah. but it's also one of the things where it's like well. Well, what do you does, does he just come back and lose to Roman? Maybe maybe that's the Saudi match because that was the other the other big news coming out of the show, the official announcement of Crown Jewel uh, in October. So maybe yeah, so maybe, maybe Brock, Brock Brock and Bill Goldberg both came back around the time to get some of that sweet sweet Saudi money. How Shocking. about that? Yeah. How about that? But yeah, oh, that's and I guess that's a note is they didn't do a real finish in the Goldberg and Lashley match. (laughs) Lashley kicked the leg out of his leg and uh, so bad. (laughs) And then they stopped the match because Goldberg couldn't stand. And then uh, uh, and then uh, Bob Lashley put uh, Sunberg in, in the full Nelson. So and, bad, man. And then Bill Goldberg shouted, "I'll kill you!" at uh, at Bob Lashley, and that was the end. That was the end of that match. Um, <laughs> I don't well, even know what that was. <laughs> but my my feeling was okay. Well, they didn't they didn't want to do a real finish because they're probably going to wrestle in Saudi Arabia, right? So, but rather than just, I guess they're like, well, fans will boo if it's a count out or a DQ. So instead, we'll do this thing. That we've we never do, and it'll just leave them sort of stunned and silent. Oh, um, it was such a bad finish, man. Yeah, <laughs> so bad. Yeah, so yeah, but that looks like I would say the top of that uh, Saudi show is is coming together quite nicely for them. I think I think well, you got Roman Brock and and Bob and Bill in the, in the top matches there. Do you, is there any chance we get Bob and MVP against Bill and Son? Ooh, that's. Son is underage, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So I mean, but I guess I mean if they could, I guess if there's like releases signed, and I mean he doesn't really have to do anything, I suppose. Like, dude, they had the ten year old kid win the tag team championships with oh, yeah. <laughs> with Braun Strowman. Like he yeah. can stand there. Yeah, he can stand. There. I mean, and he they had bumps it. tonight. Yeah, that's fair. So I guess they could do. They could very well do something along those lines. Um, yeah, I don't I don't know. Uh, it was a, it was a weird that was part of the increasingly bizarre <laughs> decisions made. Uh yes. Nikki almost a superhero tapped out clean to Charlotte Flair. Yes. Um just, of course she did. Just a mystery <laughs> why this Nikki character isn't clicking with the fans, but uh, <laughs> so bad. But uh yeah, I don't, poor, poor girl. <laughs> seems like the nicest girl. <laughs> There's there was a clip that they put on social media. Of course, it's on social media and not on the show that two million people watch. But right. it's like her getting super emotional and talking about her journey and how excited she is and you know and and how how important it is for her to like have this moment and 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 be inspirational to people. And it's like maybe you could do that. You could do more of this stuff with her and less uh, her being. And again, I know it was her idea. <laughs> Right. But I don't I'm going to guess it wasn't her idea to cut promos about how she's ugly. <laughs> and also her I don't think her, her idea was I'm going to put on the superhero costume and then you should beat me every week. <laughs> so bad, man. I'm going to guess that part wasn't <laughs> her idea. So, <laughs> but yeah, that was a it's... yeah. The show just got weirder as it went on, ending in <laughs> uh, Brock looking like Raven coming out. <laughs> It's never like heel holds the tights wins with her either. It's so she taps out. 
Mm-hmm. She gets beat. She gets pinned clean. <laughs> it's like, yep, very decisive victories. Oh man. Oh, you know, it's funny. Uh, the the purveyor of the rules of punk rock uh, on commentary was talking about, well, if Nikki can win this match, that would really solidify her as the champion. And I was like, <laughs> I would think winning the champion would chip uh, would have solidified her. But then I thought about it, and she's like one, two, and one since winning the belt. So you know, credit where it's due. <laughs> right. I think Corey was right. And she only got a win over Charlotte the week they were mad at Charlotte. <laughs> Correct. Because <laughs> Rick quit. <laughs> yes. Classic stuff. Uh, all right. Well, we've covered most of the stuff here. Uh, I guess other just real quick here. We're not going to do a full hour long thing on like the honky talk man or something. But <laughs> Br- Bray Wyatt's going to AEW, it appears. <sighs> Just as Daniel Bryan apparently is going to AEW. Like, so that man, <laughs> Bryan Danielson is cursed. He will be cursed <laughs> to for- and be forced to get a good match out of Wyndham Rotunda in every company he works for for the rest of his life. Have we ever seen, like, maybe, obviously, those like six mans and stuff years ago with the Shield, but that's mm-hmm. like almost a decade no- ago now at this point. <laughs> it's like, it's been that long since Wyatt was even like passable (laughs) it's like he's good he's very like explosive in short bursts but that was also 10 years ago it's like and you add 10 years of of uh falling flat on your back and does he have anything in the ring anymore that's yeah it's a really good question i i i don't know uh yeah i don't know (laughs) what he brings that you don't already have in some capacity right in in that company um he's creative we know that sure nice guy <laughs> i'm sure possibly <laughs> um well anyway he did uh, he did leave his one wife for uh, the ring announcer it's true that did happen yes. um yeah i don't know like i i just when i heard that i was like what what is this guy going to do in in this company that they don't art they like they already have uh mr black right like they already have their the spook, lore guy spooky lore guy like we don't do we need a second one are they gonna t- be a team are they gonna feud are they gonna do magic at each other <laughs> i like, like i don't, don't know, i don't man. want i don't want that in like i just want good wrestling matches in AEW. that's really mostly what i want <laughs> from every wrestling company but like i i i don't know that i saw that and i was like look i try not to hold like everyone's worst moments in world wrestling entertainment against them yes but it was a and there are certain people john moxley being one of them who when they left i never wanted to see again sure and you know he has had some really fun you know great moments in AEW. So if if I am proven wrong, I will I will say it, but I can't imagine a scenario where Wyndham Rotunda is on AEW weekly <laughs> and I'm excited about it. <laughs> like that that is not a scenario I can imagine in my brain currently. I think I think that's fair. Real quick, NXT takeover coming up this weekend. Samoa Joe carrying Cross for the NXT title. Joe's going to win the NXT title and Cross's career will be officially over. Mm-hmm. Uh, Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly are going to wrestle for the 336,000th time. They're going to do it in two out of three falls match. Each falls a stipulation. Um, Walter against Ila Dragunov. Uh, Raquel against Dakota Kai. What's the other match? Um, is it... It's the million dollar title match. It's uh, right. Eli Drake and uh, Cameron Grimes for the million dollar title. I'm excited for three of those five. I'm not excited for the million dollar title match. I'm not excited for to see Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly wrestle for the for 45 minutes. Like I like Cole. Mm-hmm. I like O'Reilly as a person. I don't necessarily care for his work, but I like both those guys. I just don't want to see the match again. It's just one of those things where if you have watched professional wrestling for any length of time whether it be ring of honor or nxt 
you've seen the best match that those guys are going to have together. Right. Uh, it's, and this one is probably just going to be longer. So, <laughs> sure. Um, Dakota's been working a lot of house, uh, a lot of uh, dark matches and main event tapings. Yeah. So, I think she's not long for the NXT world. She, um, could, she could be getting called up. She could be getting fired. We don't know. Yes, there's no <laughs> rules anymore for that, to be fair. But, uh, but I think either way, I don't think she's gonna be, gonna be winning. And uh, yeah, I, I guess you. I think if O'Reilly wins, we can assume that Adam Cole is either leaving or going to the main roster. Sure. And and it would seem, based on uh, Karrion Cross's uh, Monday night duties now, that he will likely uh, be be heading off as well. So yeah, I think. Despite the no more over 30s and no more short guys policy, I think Joe's about to be the champion of that promotion. Yeah. Yep. He somehow slipped through the cracks. Yep. He got, he got released and came back, and he's over 40. And uh, yeah, got a lot going against him, but he's going to win the title tomorrow. So there you go. <laughs> All right. Anything else you got you want to talk about? No, I think that, uh, I think that about covers it. That's. A lot, a lot happening in the world of, of pro wrestling, as you said. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's been a week. It's been a crazy week. Okay. More to come, everybody. All right. Until next time, I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. We'll be back soon with more stories from the wrestling life. Adios. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features. All right, good times. Easy, breezy, beautiful cover girl. Um... (laughs) Not sure what that means, but okay. It's Is that slogan. like their tagline? Yes, okay. that's, the, that's the that's the slogan. And also, we I, did a, a short, easy breezy show. Yeah, yeah. The soothing sounds of a robot yelling at you that you're being recorded. Yes. I try to keep on keeping on.